Sigmund Freud stuff isn't taken as seriously. It's not backed up as much by research, right? But I still think that that theoretical kind of model is interesting philosophically that we have an id, what you're talking about, where we just act on impulse. And then we have an ego, which is kind of in the middle. And then the superego, which is the conscience, the moral compass that says you shouldn't do this. And the ego is caught between the superego, the moral compass, and the id, which is let's just act on impulse. And the ego is trying to balance the anxiety between those two, you know, the anxiety yeah. of not giving in on impulse, which I think anxiety ties into that. Like, I want to do this, you know, I feel anxious if I don't. When, when it comes to strengthening one's willpower steel what would you say would be one one of the things that that i guess for you has helped you strengthen your willpower personally yeah that's a good question um i got two things kind of come immediately to mind so like i think abstinence one from certain things right not to specify right one because abstinence you know a lot of people assume all that just means sexual abstinence abstaining from sex or something but abstinence can mean a lot of different things it can mean abstaining from like i don't know reading a book <laughs> you know i'm just joking but yeah, yeah like that's one thing that comes or from to, social media or yeah from social person. media so that's one thing that comes to mind through my because i I tried uh different like absence for different things like that in the past and, and i did find yeah that kind of does equal some changes interesting but another one is perseverance the development of perseverance and what do i mean by perseverance I mean, going through like tough times, right? So like overcome, going through hardships and overcoming them and coming through them, you know, a different person, I guess, or, or kind of realizing that you're stronger after going through that, like the loss of a loved one or, you know, like when my biological father passed away, right? Because I live with my aunt and uncle, right? So like when my biological father passed away when I was in college, that was a huge thing that I didn't think would hit me that hard, but it did. and it was really an interesting thing to go through. It kind of started out with denial and, and then it moved to like, uh, I guess maybe depression or something close to that. And then it kind of translated to anger and I don't care about anything anymore. And then emptiness. And then it came out. And by the time you get to the end of it, it's like strength. You know, when, whenever we're little kids, you know, we, we just do things out of emotion or do things out of like, uh, you know, whatever we're feeling like, hey, we're, we're hungry, we cry. Whenever we need to go to the restroom, we tell our parents that we need to go. We can't hold it. And so it's almost it's almost uh, discipline is abstaining from 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 what our impulses would normally just do. Right. Because if we if we just do things out of impulse and, and reaction all the time, then we're no different than a little kid, yeah, right? Animal. We're, we're no different than, than an animal almost, you know, we just working on instinct, working on whatever happens. Like we just feel hungry. We go eat. Yeah. No, uh, but yeah. And Sigmund Freud, almost, the psychoanalyst called that the id. Like, I don't know if you heard of the id, the ego and the superego. But what, what do you mean by ego? It's not, I, I don't want to mistake it by saying like the ego is like, like Narcissist. pompous, you know, yeah. no, person. It's a, yeah, it's it's a state of uh you could think of it as like a state of consciousness i guess a state of mind he divided like the mind into those three kind of you can picture it like three different people in your head right and the id is like the devil or like the animal in your the beast that wants everything uh sex money drugs uh, any pleasure on the earth and just wants it instantly um and the ego is like us kind of like we're like rational like yeah, I mean, maybe I want drugs, right? But I don't want to go to jail or I don't want to uh, ruin my brain or something like that. That's the ego. It's in the middle. And then the super ego is like the moral thing. Like you have moral rules, right? Like you may believe certain things that are right and wrong that you don't want to do. And that's the super ego. So should we always do what the super ego wants? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, is that, is that like ultimate discipline? Yeah, I mean, and so the superego, that's a good question. The superego comes from our parents and how our parents raise us. Basically, like we kind of, we, uh, what do you call it? We integrate, it goes inside our mind, what our parents teach us about morality. And that becomes, the conscience could be thought of as our parents' voices in our heads kind of. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's okay to So always. is superego uh, our consensus or the person's consensus of, what it means to be completely virtuous 
so that that the super ego changes between person to person yeah if you want to go that route it could yeah because think about it not everyone's raised the same way by their parents feral children for example or someone who was abused or neglected or their parents were uh, their parents were addicted to drugs or something right so they may not have the same conscience moral compass as you were like we all have this darkness in us and we kind of do like we can all have these dark thoughts if we want to and some people may not may struggle with it right um that's the idea that's the id the id is those dark thoughts those dark temptations and impulses in our minds yeah it's a battle some people battle with it more than others and some people lose the battle and some people conquer the battle I, there's there's this aspect in almost like to to the words that you used a reset button to say like, hey, I'm going to remove social media. I'm going to remove uh, unnecessary use of like computers or is that we're so so surrounded by uh, dopamine. Uh, yeah, it's triggered. Like, triggers, yes. It's not just Christianity. Like there's a lot of other cultures and like religions that kind of develop these abstinence uh, procedures, you know, and I think it's really interesting that it, was, it, it wasn't just Christianity, right, that came up with that idea. You know, if you look at Buddhist monks, you know, they, a lot of their practices with meditation and mindfulness involved me, um, abstinence, right? Seeing other people not satisfied with all these pleasures in life and on the earth, right? So like Solomon in the Bible had all the women and riches that he wanted, and he found himself still unsatisfied. You would think it'd be the opposite, but he found himself unsatisfied. People who get really kind of dependent on drugs, often after a while, the brain changes a certain way and they're unable to experience the same pleasure of the drug as they were before. And then using the drug becomes more about avoiding withdrawal than actually experiencing the original pleasure of the drug. And so it actually becomes more suffering than pleasure. Um, giving into too much thing. We also talked about in a previous podcast, having too much money after a while, after you make a certain amount of money, your happiness doesn't increase is what the research shows. So I think it's fascinating, this idea that having too much pleasure and too much free reign to do whatever you want can often, you would think, really lead to satisfaction and more pleasure. But actually, it seems to be the case that often leads to more unsatisfaction and more displeasure. Um, and I know I mentioned also Jordan Peterson, how he talks about uh, pornography, right? And, and how like heavy use of pornography is so easily accessible now, like on the internet.